And you have a disability? Oh, I would never know that. Oh, just fantastic. What a blessing you have been this morning. Just uh, so uh, delightful. Such a delightful young lady. And uh, it's been a joy, a privilege to have you here with us. I just, you, you had me grinning like a mule eating briars the whole time. Yeah. Sitting there. Uh, turn in your Bibles, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Just one verse this morning. Um, while you're finding your place, um, those of you who remember Tom and Ruth Bowman, uh, their son had a bad car accident and had to be air flighted to the hospital. And uh, how's he doing, uh, Neva? They've taken him out of the critical list, but he's still in ICU for the brain leak. Has a brain leak. And he's having surgery on his face sometime today. Surgery on his face sometime today. So, uh, is he Tom Jr. is his yes. name, right? Yes. So, just re remember. Um, Tom Bowman Jr. And then I uh, also thought how ironic we have a thank you card here from the Pregnancy Care Center. Yeah. She was telling about the fact she was almost the victim of an abortion. And uh, God's given me a heart for our uh, local Pregnancy Care Center. We're going to be receiving an offering in December, a Christmas offering. Yes. And, uh, and some of that uh, offer will be going to uh, to the pregnancy care center. You know, if we're going to stand against abortion, we ought to put our money where our mouth is yes. and, and help uh, help the best we can to stamp it out, Amen, and, Amen. and, and make options available um, for those in, in that situation as your mom was. Um, all right, First Thessalonians chapter five. Verse number 18. In some things, give thanks. Huh? Everything. everything. Did I misread that? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Try it again. Everything. Yeah, try it again. In the pleasant things. Oh, no, you're still wrong. Let me try it again. These glasses are giving me a chance. In everything, Amen. give thanks. Yes. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everything. Amen. You reckon he really means that? Yes. Amen. I believe he does. We'll talk about it. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. I'd ask you to pray for your pastor and pray for understanding for yourself. Father, Lord, what a joy it's been to be here this morning. What a joy to have Sherry Ann and her mom with us today. Lord, you radiated through her, and uh, and Lord just lifted us up, and, uh, and allowed us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Lord, as she sang. And I pray, God, that you will bless now the preaching portion of the service, and that you speak to our hearts, and that you'd enable your servant, Lord, because without you I can do nothing. So uh, all that you do will be grateful. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching this morning on the subject, Biblical Thanksgiving. You know, it's easy to give thanks for the good things. Yes. A lot of people don't even do that. Right. A lot of people just take for granted yes. things. But this coming Thursday, most of our nation will pause. It's otherwise frenetic to gather with family and friends to offer thanksgiving to God for his manifold blessings upon our lives. Did you know that America is only one of five nations in the world to have an annual day of thanksgiving? Canada is one, Liberia, Grenada, St. Lucia are the only others. And certainly giving thanks to God is a big deal. James tells us that every single good and perfect gift that comes your way in mind is a direct gift from God. Yes. No exceptions, amen? 
Think about that for just a moment, folks. Let that uh, marinate in your psyche. God's imprint, God's hand, God's touch is on every single thing that comes in your life that you are blessed to enjoy. No exceptions. And that's not just true for saved people. The Bible says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And the, uh, the difference is that the unjust are rarely, if ever, thankful. They just take it for granted. And uh, so it's no wonder that our God would be offended by the ingratitude of so many people in the world. In Romans chapter 1, Paul, recounting the creature worship of the heathen around the globe, said that even when they knew God, they glorified him, glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Our God is highly offended by ingratitude, and rightfully so. On the night of King Belshazzar's death, of course he had no idea that would be his last night on earth, but on the night of his death, he threw a big party to a thousand of his lords. And the Bible says that they drank wine and that they praised the gods of gold and silver and brass and stone and iron and wood. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know the story, uh, the finger of a man's hand began to write on the wall. And, uh, and nobody could uh, figure out what was being written. And the Bible says, scared Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, uh, Belshazzar so bad that his knees began to, to knock one against the other. And uh, somebody remembered about Daniel, the wisest man in the kingdom. So they sent for Daniel, and Daniel gave the interpretation on the, of the writing on the wall. And this is one thing that he said to Belshazzar. He said, he said, the God in whose hand is thy breath, hast thou not glorified? And he said, Belshazzar, this is your last night upon the earth. His ingratitude uh, brought him an early hour. He said, you praise the gods of gold and silver, brass and stone and wood, and you've not glorified the very God in whose hand is your breath. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul said that one of the defining characteristics of people in the last days would be that they would be unthankful. Not just unthankful to God, but unthankful in general. America, with all of its bounty and blessings, and, uh, has managed to raise a generation of ungrateful, entitled little brats. And uh, Paul said to Timothy, This know also that in the last days, perilous, dangerous times shall come. Man, you look around this country and tell me we're not there. Amen. Last days. Amen. Prosecutors who won't prosecute criminals. Mm -hmm. But uh, those same prosecutors are, are more than happy to go after Christian parents who are concerned about their children. Yeah. Defund the police open borders, perilous times, tens of thousands waving flags in support of a murderous regime called Hamas. Uh, but we're talking about biblical gratitude here this morning. And uh, may I say to you that giving God thanks in everything uh, is in fact biblical gratitude. It's something that is holy and completely unnatural. It's easy for you and I to give God thanks for all the good things yeah. in our lives. Uh, but it's wholly unnatural to give God thanks for the things that aren't so good. Yeah. But you and I have been promised that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. I was quoting that verse to a preacher friend of mine a few years back, right as I was going through a, a, a very devastating thing in my life, and I was sharing with him, all things work together for good to them that love God. And uh, to my absolute surprise, he said, it don't really mean what you think it means. He said, it just means the good things. 
No, I was, I was, I was shocked. I mean, wonderful man of God, wonderful preacher. But I said, that's not what it says. He said, all things work together for good yeah. to them that love God. The good things and the bad things. And uh, uh, that word, my point is that this, the concept that God is actually intimately involved in every detail of our lives and is somehow taking our bad decisions and working them together for our good is admittedly a radical concept, but it is nevertheless absolutely true. The word radical is defined as revolutionary. You want to revolutionize your life? Start believing God when he says that all things work together for good to them that love him. You'll never have another bad day if you begin to trust God, to walk by faith and to believe. Believe what he says. That doesn't mean that bad things won't happen in your life. It just means that when you're trusting God completely and implicitly, it eliminates being on an emotional roller coaster. You know what I'm talking about? Up one day, down the next. Up one day, down the next. Uh, have you ever tried to live life that way? Live life based on, well, hopefully I have a good day today. Hopefully, you know, nothing bad happens today. Well, I'm telling you, when you're living by faith, you can stay up all the time, no matter what God allows to happen in our lives. This up and down, in and out, Confuses a yoga, as a termite in a yoga, there's no way to live. Amen? Um, no way to live, as, especially as a born again Christian. But it's powerful, of course, for the unsaved. They don't know any better. Four times the Bible says, The just, as those of us that have been born again, the just shall live by faith. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Trusting God in everything. Why? Because all things work together for good to them that love God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, what does that mean? That means that my life is not governed. My emotions are not governed by what I see. The tragedies, the losses, the, de the devastating events of life. My life is governed by what saith the Lord. And the Lord says for me to be anxious in nothing. The Lord says for me not to worry about a thing. That word anxious is defined as experiencing worry, unease, or nervousness. And God said be careful for nothing. God said don't worry about a thing. Let me ask you a question. Does that classify your life? Does that characterize your life? Sure. Not worrying about a thing? How many of you actually live life that way? Completely free of worry. Completely free of anxiety. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall put on. He said, look at the birds. He said, they don't plant fields. They don't uh, reap harvest. They don't gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Amen. And I remind you, he's not their father. Amen. He's their creator, but he's your father. You get the difference? Yes. Praise God. And, uh, and which of you, he said, can add one cubit to a stature by taking thought or by worrying? He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, and all these things shall be added unto you. A good father provides for every need of his children. And, uh, and, and a good portion of the things they want. Why? Because it brings us joy to give to our children. I just spent a ton of money on my daughter. And uh, I, I can't wait. I got a little gift to give her. Her name's Rachel Faith. And uh, I have a beautiful necklace made that has her name on the necklace. And I'm going to give it to her in a couple of weeks. 
I'm excited about that. Why? Because I love her. She's my daughter. And I, I, I want to bring her joy. I want to do things that bring her joy. Hey, God said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Amen. shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to his children, to them that ask? And so why worry when you can pray? There's only one reason why any Christian would worry about anything, and it's quite simply unbelief. Unbelief. You see, all things work together for good to them that love God. But you'd have to say, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. to, to live in worry. Yeah. Um, Charles Spurgeon said, do not rest until faith in Jesus is the most, is the master passion of your soul. Do not rest until faith in Jesus is the master passion of your soul. Jesus asked his frantic disciples out on the Sea of Galilee. You remember that trip? Why are you so full of fear? How is it that you have no faith? I love that old hymn that says, Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. really is. Amen. Faith is the victory. What's the opposite of victory? Defeat. What's defeat? It's defeat, worry, consternation, an emotional roller coaster. And I'm telling you that that's no way to live. And uh, I'm saying that no Christian has to or should ever live that way. It's insulting to God. It's insulting to God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everything, good and bad, is the will of God that you learn to trust Him no matter what. No matter what storms come your way. What a life-changing directive. To never again be worried or anxious or nervous about anything, but thankful for everything, wholly and completely by faith, that our Heavenly Father always only has our very best in view and in, uh, in all that He does and all that He allows to come into our lives. You can trust Him. Amen? Amen. Now tonight, uh, I will not be here. And uh, what I have uh, suggested to Brother Paul is that we have, an, you know, we have Thanksgiving coming Thursday. And I've suggested that tonight we have an old-fashioned testimony service. But what I'd like you to consider doing, think about, pray about this afternoon, is, is look back over your life and think of something that at the time you thought was just the worst thing that could possibly happen. Yeah. But God turned it around and God worked it <laughs> together for good. Yeah. And, and today you are thankful for that thing that Amen. you would have never been thankful for otherwise. Let's, let's practice biblical thanksgiving. Let's put Publicly. Hello. Let's practice giving God thanks and everything. And tonight, let's let's publicly look back over your life. And uh, my goodness, honey, if you could sing any better, not having head, I can't even imagine. Uh, you're just fantastic. And. Uh, and it's part, part of God's plan. Part of God's plan that uh, I, I just don't know that you could be as good as you are had it not been for the for the difficulties that you had to overcome. Um, our God is such a good God, and and He does all things well. Amen. 
in your life and in my life, he doeth all things well. And, um, uh, well, there's been some things in my life that I would have never chose. Never chose. I would have, I would have uh, been, you know, recoiled in horror against. But they've been the things that have made me who and what I am today. And uh, I'm glad that I can trust him. I can trust him. I may not ever understand why this happened, why that happened, but I can trust Jesus. Amen. He's trustworthy, and uh, and you can too. So Thanksgiving tonight, dinner this coming Wednesday. Um, for those of you that have tickets, Wednesday you're having the dinner. Is that right? That's right. Everybody knows about that? Yeah. It's going. Okay. All right. Brother Paul, you want to come and lead us in invitation? Let's stand together. Let's just sing that little chorus that we like so much. Thank